Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for February 7th, 2022, at 6 30 p.m. Good evening, Ms. Brenner. Can you call roll, please? Sure. Mayor Lowry? Here. Vice Mayor Grimm? I'm here. Councilman Bond? Here. It, that's how you say it, correct? Did I say it? Bond. Okay. Yep. First. All right. Um, Councilman Cook? Here. Councilman Lindsay? Here. Councilman Rodwell? Here. Six members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's uh, invocation will be done by Cindy Condon. Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight and I ask a blessing upon the leadership of this city, upon our community, and upon the people who serve as first responders. I ask that you would give us all wisdom, good cheer and joy in this evening and make us help us make the right decisions in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I mean to say it's hot, it's hot. Lord. Is it messing up your hair? It is. Okay. All right. All right, moving on. Uh, we need action on the council minutes for the February 18th, or I'm sorry, January 18th uh, regular session. So moved. Second. second. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. talking about snow removal here we go Grim asked to lower the two-inch level and it goes on most Lindsay motions to have the city manager to cancel the cost potential plowing the streets at two inches versus four inches shouldn't it be one inch versus two inches yes yes that's what it's supposed to be yeah oh I okay say that again Okay, under the uh, service report, it okay. says Lindsay moves to have the da -da -da -da, salting the streets at two inches versus four inches. It should be one inch versus two inches. One inch versus two inch. It was the cost difference. What it would cost is what it was supposed to be. Is that correct, Mr. Mayor? Did everything else, was it correct other than... Mm -hmm. The inches. Okay, so one to two. It's changed. Good. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All right, when you're ready to talk All right, my second was Rigold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. You should Who abstain because yeah. you weren't on council yet. Yeah. I'll abstain. And then just state your reason because I wasn't on council yet. Okay, because I was not on council yet. All right. Councilman Cook? Abstain, same. Okay. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. And Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 402. Um, so the uh, one announcement tonight, I'm sure, uh, at the uh, last meeting, Ms. Nokowski had, had mentioned her uh, her baby resignation it would be effective the day after our last meeting so since uh it was not effective until the day after it, you know it will take place legally today since today is the day we officially announce it uh, so what will happen is again just as we did in the past we can't we can't fill her seat any sooner than 10 days but no longer than 30 days per uh the charter so um let me see here, let me right here. so that would uh back to our calendar so today is the seventh you would have to put the notification in the paper that there is a vacancy and to, that we can accept applications uh, we have a council meeting on the 14th i think that would be too soon mm -hmm. to interview people uh, so i was thinking that you, this would be pretty much the same time yeah hold on, hold on hold on <laughs> sorry to interrupt it's the 21st, 21st. is the council meeting not the 14th. Oh, you're right, 21st. Actually, okay. it's the 22nd. Yeah, yeah. 22nd. Okay. This so president. Um, yeah, it still would be. 
We kind of run into the same situation as right. last month. So I was thinking if, as long as council's okay, then we would, uh, will come up with a cutoff date and then do a special uh, meeting on the, 20, uh, let's see, the 28th, which would be on Monday. Okay. If you ran the article or ran the ad and say you're the first thing tomorrow, when would it go in? Um, it will be, it'll most likely run Thursday. Thursday. Thursday to be safe. Okay, so if you ran it, so we'll say Thursday would be the 10th, is the soonest it would be, and that would give them, let's see, one week. Yeah, that would be, yeah, we could, we could run it, whatever the council thinks, we could cut it off on the 24th, the 20th. Second, I mean, and then do the do the uh, special meeting on the 28th. What does council think on the time? When would you want to do the cutoff for applications? Once we cut off, there's no extra work required by city staff, correct? Um, other than I contact the applicants and let them know of when our meeting is scheduled. So it would take more than a weekend to do that. Not more than a weekend, no. And how about the 25th? To make the cut off the 25th, which is a Friday. Give them plenty of time. Oh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's fine with mine. Wow. So. More time we can get I don't, I don't think Mrs. Barron needs to work on the weekend. No. She's not doing anything else on weekends. <laughs> it's winter time. She's <laughs> <laughs> well, pretty on busy in the summer. <laughs> if it goes out on the 10th and we make it the 24th, then that gives them exactly two weeks. Two weeks. That should be yeah. adequate. And that way you don't have to work on the weekend. Okay. <laughs> That sounds good. You guys okay? And the meeting will be on the 28th? If that's that yeah, that's okay. With what time do you want to do that? Let's say we did 6 time, 6.30. 6 30, right? 6.30, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Mr. Cook, is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay, so applications will be accepted until the 24th, 4 p.m. Close the business day at the city building. Okay. And, and a special meeting will be held at 6 30 at the shelter house on the 28th. Okay. Yeah, for all of that. I move we hold a special meeting on the 28th to Second. interview and appoint a new council member. Second. Second. Okay. The motion wasn't made when it was second. Second, Mr. Lindsay. <clears throat> all right. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. And Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Yeah. That motion's passed as 6-0. When you send that out to the newspaper, can you just send the all council a copy of it, please? Yeah. Thank you. Show our house is booked. Is booked? No, I'm booking it for us. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. Yep. So 28, 6.30 p.m. <clears throat> is the special meeting. All right, anything else on that topic, Council? All right, moving on to city manager report. Mr. Bridge, good evening, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, members of the public. Uh, my city report going here. I'd like to share with you the city manager report. It's not too lengthy this time around since it is the first meeting of the month. Uh, so on discussion topics, I am requesting a special meeting on Monday the 14th or Tuesday the 15th to discuss a certain contract with the fire and EMS department. Uh, it's something I did want to do in executive session, but we are not permitted to, so it would have to be open. Um, I would like the fire chief to be present and also our finance director to be present as well. If council has any availability, you all know the two dates, that would be great. Um, we're kind of at a small window with it because we have to go to their meeting on the that Wednesday afterwards. Sure. So um, greatly appreciate it if we can squeeze that in. Mr. Mayor. Sir. <clears throat> Since the 14th is Valentine's Day and you all have wives, uh, I would suggest we do it on the 15th if council is okay with that. And what time are you thinking, Mr. Bridge? Oh, whatever time's convenient for council. Uh, you go, with, go with 6.30 like we uh, warned me to. I'm going to be Is the evening okay or do you prefer during the day? Uh, we're, whatever council can do is fine with us. Um, yep. I will be out of town on the 15th. That doesn't mean you guys can't meet. Yeah, there will be no action. It's just discussion. Well, I guess there, there might be. Yeah, there might be action. Yeah, there would be action. There would be action. There would be no legislative action. It's fine. Yeah. It's okay. I've been married 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> he could bring his wife with him. Hey, yeah. I was married a lot longer. I still had flowers on the card on Valentine's Day. 
I like living. <laughs> so 14th at 630? 14th? 14th? 16th? So, yeah, because he won't be here. On the 15th. Oh, okay. I'll be, I'll be yeah, in town. So. That's fine with me. So, get a motion to make a meeting on the 14th. At so move. Move we have a meeting on February 14th at 630 to discuss a certain contract with the fire and EMS. Second. On the 14th. Okay. Who was the first? Motion by Mr. Graham, second by Mr. Lindsay. Okay. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Any other meetings we need to schedule? We're out of Mondays, so yeah. <laughs> We're out of Mondays. <laughs> We're out of Mondays. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. And moving on with the city manager report, uh, we have attached our credit card annual report for 2021. This is something that we'll be doing from here on out annually. It's part of one of the ORC updates and requirements that we have to do. Basically, what we have to do is uh, let council know about any kind of reward points that we have. Um, so that's what you have in front of you tonight. Uh, and again, it is to satisfy the auditor request. Um, we are seeking a motion to approve that annual report. Just to be safe. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I move to approve the annual report, uh, credit card annual report. Second. Second by Mr. Graham. Second by Mr. Lindsay. Second. 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 Credit card annual hey, report. Okay. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Motion's accepted 6 0. Awesome. Thank you. And moving on to the city manager report. So we are getting a new phone system installed at the city building. It's going to save us a lot of money on a monthly uh, 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 year and yearly, I guess, yeah, yearly too. Very excited about it. So one of the features that we can have is basically a trunk line. If someone were to call in and say, I wanted to reach one of the council members, we can put you into a general council thing. Once it's into that, they'll have the option to select each of you. So each of you would have your own personal line that could be forwarded to your email. If they leave a message, it could be sent to your cell phones. It's a way for council to have a presence into the phone system, into that main city building. Is that something you guys are interested in doing or just kind of keep it um, as we've been doing it for 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 at this point in time with the business card and your cell phone numbers or do you guys want to do both? I'm fine with the way it's been going. That's just me. Does it cost anything for that? It's seven ninety five a month, eight bucks or something like that. For a council member? Mm -hmm. For all of us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm good with the way it's been. <laughs> so am I. Yeah. You save that seven ninety five. No reason not to complicate it. Yeah. So okay. Thank you. And moving on with the city manager report, I put in front of council the financial disclosure and reporting statement just as a reminder. So please do that. I think the deadline is May 22nd. Um, veterans banner, we do have the application in there. And what I'm seeing tonight from council is just some guidance on the price for this. Um, it's something that I don't feel comfortable setting myself. Uh, Councilman Lindsay, right here, I have actually had a sample made for us and this is exactly what it's going to look like. Um, they are pretty decent in size. It is two-sided. Uh, if you can see through that one, she didn't have it two-sided in stock to make the sample. So when I actually printed it, it will be two-sided one. We'll see through it. But that's what it's going to look like. Um, it's She's going to charge the city $45 to make that. So what we have to do after that is the manpower to install them, take them down, Anybody store them, that? et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's not something you want to double up on your citizens by any means, but you do want to make something off of it. Um, I was thinking 55 or 60. Did you figure what you said about that? I mean, it's not going to take, I wouldn't imagine taking an hour to put it up. But. Mm, we're going to do it multiple times a year, but you know, that's manpower. It's, it is what it is. It's no dip. We're going to take them up and put them down when we put the flags up, essentially. So it's not like we're going to go above and beyond. So we're getting truck 45? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'd be fine with 55 or so. I mean, yeah. 55. I think that's fair. 55, $10. Mm hmm. Okay with that? Mm hmm. Okay, if you guys want to make a motion to secure that, that would be great. So move. $55. Second. It's first one. You did so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> was that Mr. Grimm? Grimm was the first. Bond was the second. Okay. okay. 
Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsey? Yes. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Krim? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Motion's accepted six here. We have one more thing that is going to require a motion, and we are done with the city manager's report. Um, TCC is our transportation coordinating committee out of Springfield. Um, so we have a representative onto that board. It has been historically Mr. Cook. Um, so we need to reappoint someone. I don't know if he's willing to do that again. He wants to pass the torch to someone else. I have no problem. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I move it. We appoint uh, Councilman Cook to the TCC uh, appointment. Second. Second was Rodel. Yes. Yep. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Baum. Yes. Councilman Cook. I'm saying. Or voting for myself. Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodold. Yes. That motion is accepted five at zero one. And that is all I have for the city manager report. May I bring up something? Yes, sir. This you sent us on snow removal. It cost forty three hundred dollars to plow the streets. Uh, this is what Mr. Kiko submitted and I emailed out. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't see forty three hundred dollars as an obstacle to making sure we have safe streets. Um, <clears throat> Today, driving around, especially the streets north of Lake Avenue, some of them are in horrible shape. I mean, trying to drive a school bus down with two inches of snow in the street is a bit difficult, slipping and sliding around. Um, I don't see any problem with reducing it to one inch. If it will keep somebody from having an accident, keep somebody from falling and hurting themselves, uh, keep somebody from slipping like under a car. So I would move that we change the minimum snowfall for plowing from two inches to one inch. I would just advise you that it's going to do absolutely nothing here. I don't want some of that snow packed down. Uh, my advice to council would just be hold off to the next meeting when Mr. Kitt goes here. Um, so he can explain a little more in detail how it goes. But my recommendation is to not change it and keep it how it is. Well, I mean, I, plus, I think this this particular snow, with the amount of ice we had, freezing rain, prior to the actual snowfall, uh, added to it. Uh, plus, on the north side of the lake, I mean, no one uses their driveways. They all park on the streets. It's so hard to get a plow down there and actually get good clearance mm -hmm. and good and good contact with the pavement to get the snow off. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying that this. I think this one was a little different because of the amount of ice. Did you have any issues that the city used uh, or city received on top of the snowfall, um, and, and and the short period of time we got as well. Um, I mean, I thought. I'm gonna be honest. I thought. The, I thought the roads for the city were were, were pretty good come Saturday. Um, you know, I. You know, mm -hmm. of course, I live on Lake Street, so. Yeah. But. I mean, I have friends and relatives that live on all corners of the town, so I, I, I commend Howie and the, and the gentlemen out there that were mm -hmm. working night and day to get the roads as, as good as they could get them yeah. with, with the, the circumstances. Like I said, the amount of ice we got. Um, I mean, because I was in Springfield uh, Saturday, and those weren't much better. Yeah. <laughs> they, you know. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot, like we, when talking to Howie about this, it's, you know, when you have a one inch, it's, it's usually in and out real quick, you know, and you're gonna spend all the money, just go ahead and saw it, make one pass, essentially, dude. And it's, usually when you have that, it's, it's not a major snowstorm. This was very unique in the fact that we had a bunch of rain beforehand. You could not pre-treat anything, which is why you saw the ice build up. Um, and then the snowpack on top of that. And once you have that ice down, that's not pre-treated, you're gonna want that snowpack on top because you're gonna wanna dr drive on that snow opposed to ice. Um, so, yeah, you know. The next um, day, that night, Thursday night, when the, when the water froze, it mm -hmm. was lit. Yeah. Howie told me that when, he, when the, the accident happened up near Peggy's house, that he parked his truck on Madison when it was just the ice. Mm -hmm. He said he literally parked it and got out and he slid over to the curb. 
Yeah, I got up that Thursday morning too just to check. But, but once the snow fell, even though it's still slippery, it gives up a little grip. It does. It does. It does. And I checked with both our emergency services sure they didn't have any issues as long as it's drove appropriately. I understand they're concerned with wanting to go down. I just don't know if it's really your bang for your buck. If you're going to spend 4300 for a one inch, it's not going to make much of an impact at all because I, I do believe that that one inch is going to be gone relatively quick. You know? <clears throat> Ultimately, it's up for you guys to decide we work within whatever council wants us to do, but just be aware how much that costs and, you know, um, the extra. It's, it's, just, it's just a lot of wear and tear in your equipment for no, no really bang for your buck, essentially. Can I, do you have anything else to add or can I go to the other council members? You can go to the other council members. Mr. Lindsay, then we'll go to Mr. Cutter. The, uh, if we get like 10 one inch snowfalls that adds up pretty quick for a one inch of snow uh myself i think it should stay at the two inch and you know uh, i don't think most people has a problem driving on a couple inches of snow and they do plow at two inches you know if they can get down the street uh they uh that the big truck won't go down some of the streets and they use a pickup with, uh, with a plow in the front of it, I believe, still. Although I haven't seen it this year, I did see the big truck. Uh, I, I think the cost of it, the difference between the two inches and, and uh, cause it costs the same for two inches, right? Yeah, that 43 yeah. is basically just had to do one pass. Yeah, so I, I think uh, in, in light of what it would do or what it won't do, I think the two inches is sufficient to, to plow and save the wear and tear on the vehicles also. That's my two cents we're on the subject. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Well, with this last snow we had, the fact it rained considerably with the uh, ice coming down and before the snow actually fell, Pre-treating would not have worked. However, with a one to two inch basis on a normal snow, I think pre-treating will work. I think that before we make a final decision on this, we need to investigate the pre-treating, the possibility of getting that material or that equipment in here to do pre-treating and particularly since the cost of salt is 80 some dollars a ton, I think the last bid was somewhere in that ballpark. It's 50, 50 a ton. But it has gone up every year. Yes, every it's two gone years. up uh, and it's gonna to continue to go up from what I understand. Mm -hmm. From what I have read, and the fact that we have almost all cities around here going to the pre-treating, I think we need to entertain this thought mm -hmm. before we make our final decision of what we need to do. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Then I would withdraw my motion, and I would kindly ask that we make another run through on streets like Leatherwood, um, Brookfield, some of those in that area. I'll talk with Howie about it and see what the best move forward is. Okay. Sure. You said what, sir, what streets again? Brookfield and Leatherwood are two that stick out in my mind. <clears throat> there are plenty of others. Brookfield is the one that takes you back to the elementary school, correct? Yes. Okay. Peggy Eggleston, 312 South Main Street. Um, I'm sure everybody knows that I almost got nailed by a semi the other night, but I wanted to thank Chief Trustee and his guys in the Sheriff's Department for their help. I mean, that was uh, something I don't want to go through again. Mm -hmm. But it also brings up that something needs to be done on that curve. 
I've lived on that curve since 1965, and this is probably the worst wreck I've seen. And if he would have hit that pole at a, just a little bit different angle, he would have been in my living room. And he took down two pillars off of the porch that had been standing there for 150 years. Mm -hmm. But something needs to be done about that curve. No, I mean, I'm sorry, um, maybe Chief can answer this. Was it more speed related or was it more road condition related? Road conditions, yeah, well, I, what speed he was going, I don't know, and I haven't looked at the report. Um, but the road was a complete black ice. Because when we stepped out of our vehicles, it was like ice skate. I mean, would it, would it make sense? I mean, I know because it's 35 coming into New Carlisle until you get to the dominoes and then everyone kind of like starts to, would it make sense to push the 25 back to uh, as soon as you come into city limits or whatever the clearance may be? Like I mean, it could, but also too, the driver of the vehicle should have known that. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah, well, he should have been driving at a, at a speed comparable to what the conditions yeah. were. that he could not only to the house, but to his truck. Oh, yeah. Oh, I saw pictures. Man. Did he get hurt? He came as close as he could get to getting hurt and not getting hurt. <laughs> he had a two-by-four, six inches from his pace mm. Mm. that went through his windshield. Are you done, Mr. Yes. Sorry. Mr. Cook? Back <clears throat> in the late 50s, we had a Tecumseh student who had just graduated from high school, who proceeded to try to take that pole out. Consequently, he lost his life on that pole. I don't know whether or not a guardrail at that point would have sufficed in the situation there, but again, I think with the road conditions, the fact we've had, what, three to four? Maybe we need to take a look at that and see what we can do. That's not the only accident we've had there. <laughs> we've had plenty. You finished? <clears throat> Did you have something, Mr. Penn? Mr. Lundin. The, uh, this is Mr. Bridge. Uh, can we put a guardrail up there because it's a state route, or would the state have to put that up? Force. Uh, I, think we're just I mean, I think guard a guardrail uh, in in that case, in that area, because they, they have been several there that, that I know of, would be a good idea. If we can do it, I don't I mean, know what the cost would be, but sure. it's a state route. Maybe the state would do it. How often, I mean, there, how many, I would just ask council to look at this critically, thinking, because how many, uh, no offense to anyone, but how many wrecks have been there? How many, what's the cause of those wrecks? This is the step what the state does. You know, what, how, what, how much property damage has, been, has occurred? Has there been any deaths? Mm -hmm. Those are the things they look at. And I don't know if lowering the speed limit is going to, would have much of an impact. Um, I think people would still probably speed a little bit. Yeah, it all depends um, on the speed. 20, yeah. 25 miles an hour there is more than sufficient. If you take it at 25, I mean, mm -hmm. it's sufficient for that grade, yeah. that curve. So, are people, I mean, with you controlling out there, what do you see? Do you see this? Okay, so it's 35 right there? It's 35 right till you get to... Right yeah. till you get to dominoes. 25 to dominoes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So by mere people going, yeah. usually 5% of them? Typically, I don't see much speeding issues on Main Street, so I, if, if you guys don't know, I'm typically the guy that sits at Water Dog once during second shift hours. Um, when they see me, typically they come through town. Most people come through town at 28 and 35 anyways. Um, I do not hardly ever see a lot of speed there. At least when I'm not, sitting there. It's not excessively speeding from the <clears throat> That's with me sitting at Water Dog. Now, when I'm not there, I don't know what people are doing. Um, but when I am there, I will say people do slow down pretty excessively. I mean, most speeds I see 28 and 35. Of the wrecks that were there, how many have resulted in going off the road into the property? I don't know. She might be able to answer that question. <laughs> I mean, I've lived in my house for four years. Mm -hmm. This is the fourth time somebody has come through my yard between the poles. <coughs> so it does leave the roadway? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I've got pictures of previous 
There's no curb. The guardrail here. Would, would help, I think. No, I'm just saying. There's no curb at all. Where it needs to be, you've got two businesses in a driveway. Oh, you can't put it across the driveway, but the other areas, it, would the other areas help you any or, or help that situation any? I know we can't put it across the driveway, but the other areas, would that help any on that curve there or not? We need it from Hensley Park it almost to my right. It would help to go airborne. And that, that encumbers uh, that the wood shop there. Especially this. Would block off Eggleston Science. Well, we, we couldn't block that off. We couldn't block that off. We couldn't block off a driveway to a, to a business. Got two businesses in my driveway. Yeah. Yeah. So guardrail isn't enough. Uh. <laughs> well, I said we Chief. You also have to remember also with a guardrail at any type of speed like that, also it will tend not to stop the car, it will tend to make the car go airborne. Mm -hmm. I mean, if someone's going 25, 35 miles an hour, what kind of impact? I mean, I'm sure that people speed. But I don't recall like a lot of like serious, serious. I'm sure there's been some. I, I, I know and I've talked to you about it. But like how many resulted in like, like, it, I just don't know how. If you're going 35 and maybe you have, you, I mean, it's 25 there, 25 there. But if you're going 25 there, 25 or 35, and we would that make two cars. There's no reason you should be going off the road at 25 miles an hour there. If, unless you're not paying attention to your vehicle, you're on your phone, whatever. That's, that's yeah. That's yeah, we're not paying attention. People not paying attention. Yeah. Obviously, speed will cause that. I mean, yeah, when you texted me that. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we can further discussion with Mr. Kick here because he knows the and I'll get with the police about enforcing the area just to maybe get a little feel for what the true speed is and then we'll re revisit it. But I agree with you. I mean, if something's going to be, if it's a continual thing, and then that's one thing. Isolated as incidents are another. Um, but it was it was close to going into. Yeah. It was. It I'll was give it. Close. Sure. And that'd be scary for any of us, but something we can at least look at and get some information back to you guys. Well, they're going to tell you the same thing. It's a, they, they look at crash. Remember that mm -hmm. when that gentleman on Linden where it comes in, he came yeah. in and he wanted that. It's they look. It's it's unfortunate, but that's how they do it. If, if they look at how much property damage and how much death occurs, and they won't do anything. Yeah, somebody has to die for those. It, it, it's unfortunate, but that's just what it is. Now that doesn't mean we can't be proactive at the local level. We just got to make sure we're doing it legally and then properly. Well, after mm -hmm. And here's where it gets a little gray is they, they issue recommendations and it's the same book that we looked at one of the guy on London. And let's say we wanted to put a stop sign there but it wasn't warranted. Say someone ran that stop sign and we had a device there, a traffic control device that was not prescribed by the state essentially, we could be held liable for having that there. And that's the rhetoric with why we have so selective about what the signal device we put when and where because it, it does, it can lead us into some issues. Few and far between, but it's still there. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Ms. Eggleston. Uh, anyone else? Alrighty, moving on to, uh, let's see, committee report, shot review. Uh, no one's here for that. Uh, Parks and Rec board, do you have anything to go over? Anyone? What? Anything? No, 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 she put out the special meeting on February 9th, and we couldn't remember what it was. That's the charter review. Right. Okay. Sorry. All right. And moving on to resolution. Ms. Okay, we have resolution 2022-02. Introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution amending and adopting the New Carlisle City Council Rules of Council.
Mr. Mayor. Sure. Move to adopt uh, resolution uh, 20, 2022-02R. Second. You'll get it. Uh, it's explanation of this resolution. It is a yearly housekeeping thing that council makes their rules on how they want to operate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments, council? Yes. yes sir. Section 9, legislation. D, precedence of motions. Down a couple paragraphs. It says a motion to adjourn shall be in order at any time with a second. Is this the most recent? version of the rules yes. of council because mm -hmm. I know two years ago we changed it to a motion a second and a majority vote yes because I introduced it oh, does it say the actual vote on there no yeah mm. yeah it, sh it should say the which one is it Mr. Graham section 9 legislation what? section 9 the presidents of motions down a couple paragraphs the one sentence paragraph, motion to adjourn shall be in order at any time with the second. did you say section what? I'm sorry. Section nine on legislation D. So what is it supposed to say? And majority vote. Shall be in order at any time with a second and a majority vote. Okay. I'll take a look, but yeah. So, yeah, because then we started voting yeah. a couple years ago. Yeah. We used to not vote on it. My first meeting. So we need to I think that we had that in there. Then you take it back out when it when no, certain people we, left? We left that in there based upon the fact that we could not adjourn with only a motion. We needed a second. However, it would then come up to a vote if the rest of council felt that that motion and second was out of line. They still had the opportunity to vote that motion down. And I believe that, that was the reason it was left in there that way. The reason I brought it up was because a previous mayor used that to well, I remember. stifle dissent by mm -hmm. our current mayor. You guys want to just let this die for lack of motion and bring it back next week so and I can look at some things? Again? Yeah, that's fine. Sound good? Check. Yeah. So I, mean, I want to review minutes and stuff like that to make sure we have everything in order. Because these, once they're set, I mean, we have to amend them later. Yeah. Um, because there's something else I want to look at with the attorney that I wanted to add, but I didn't have time to work with on this weekend about the reasons you can go to executive session um, and li list that on here too. Um, but I was, there's two sections in the ORC that, re that detail executive session, and one is under the administrative code that's super long, and there's another section in the ORC that addresses it, and it's like bullet point nine sections. So I don't know which one is the best to put in here. So if we table this, just let it die for lack of motion or whatever. It's been moved and seconded. Who seconded? No. And he can rescind his second, and I'll rescind my motion. I'm going to, I'll withdraw the second. I'm um, sir? I'll, I'll withdraw. withdraw the second. I'll withdraw my motion. Just revisit it. Mm-hmm. clarification. What, you said two years ago? I don't yeah. remember. I don't remember the exact date. It was, I was brand new and it was, we had, uh, you were not new to Because we have the revision history on the last page. Oh, hush. <laughs> we have the revision history on the last page. And the last time we revisited with two revisions during COVID procedures, where we made the online meetings and not, we revised it once in 19, beginning of the year 19. And I'm assuming it was probably after between the 1808 and then nine because uh, when did you resume mayor roles in 19? Was that the beginning of 19? No, June. It was like June. No, no, like June. Or something. Yeah. Because you would have to, you would have to. Okay, I'll look at, I'll look at the history. I, I want to go back and look at the council minutes and make sure it's all good. 
since there seems to be a lot of confusion on it. It was a few years ago. It was? Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. So we can skip on that one. All right, we have ordinance 2022-03, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending ordinance 2021-36 that established a schedule of fines and costs and a bail bond schedule for the city's mayor's court. So moved. Second. Second. An explanation of this ordinance, uh, we are starting a mayor's court and we are codifying our bond schedule and when we were doing that with the software program, the lady at the software program had noticed some issues that we needed to clean up on ours and that's what we have in front of council tonight. So the yellow highlighted ones are new ones? No, the ones that were uh, changed, yeah. Okay. Under vehicle operation, there are two with no Ohio Revised Code, local code. Mm -hmm. Does that make any difference? Uh, where you're at, vehicle cooperation? Yes, yeah, sir. Because um, probably it's probably just a local code. Okay. I'm good. Else? Thank you. Ready? Okay. Second was Lindsay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Graham. Yes. yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. <laughs> uh, Councilman Bond, yes. And Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Yes. That passes six to zero. Um, Gage turned down. <laughs> We have ordinance 2022-04, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on February 21st, 2022. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purpose of purchasing a newer vehicle for the director of public service. Ordinance 2022-05, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on February 21st, 2022. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purpose of purchasing a new utility truck for the water department. And you're at eight. Um, 06. Okay. Ordinance 2022 06, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on February 21st, 2022. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purpose of purchasing a newer aerial platform bucket truck for the Public Works and Parks Department. Ordinance 2022-07, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on 2-21-22. An ordinance amending the official zoning map of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio to rezone a parcel of land from OA, Office Apartment, to CB Central Business. Ordinance, I'm at OA right now. Okay, so for Ordinance 2022 I'm going to ask Council to uh, break rules and introduce this new one. The title did not change. This has been an evolving thing over the weekend that I've been working with the attorney on. So we did decide uh, this morning that we wanted further clarification on two sections in here, and that's 27808B, uh, where it talks about prote protected class um, or any other class protected by state or federal law. Uh, Jake felt as though that needed to be in there. I agree with him. And then the other change I sent from the Saturday amendment we were working on on Saturday was 278.17, the criterion for amendments for B. Um, we wanted more clarification on once the board, should they amend their bylaws, what's the process for them to be approved? So basically, they have to meet as a board, go over their bylaws. They have to approve the changes on their own, but then it's clearly indicated that it has to come to you guys for final approval. And that's what uh, we wanted to clarify out. Excuse me. Because you need a motion to break the rules. Um, Is that your time? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Without changes. Yep, basically. Council? Council. So moved. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by <clears throat> Mr. Redwall. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? 
Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Okay, motion to break. The rules of council passes 6 0. Um, I'll go ahead and read Ordinance 2022 Introduction tonight. <clears throat> Public hearing and action on February 21st, 2022. An ordinance amending and replacing a certain section of chapter 278 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding the parks and recreation board bylaws. I can read that. Additional city business. Um, there will be a city council special meeting with a charter review on February 9th, 2022, here at Smith Park Shelter House at 6.30 p.m. City offices will be closed on Monday, February 21st, 2022, to observe President's Day and open discussion for any city-related matters. Mr. Mayor, uh, I believe at the last council meeting, I had asked council and the city manager to bring information on the 11 to $13 an hour for the firefighters if things could afford it. And I was expecting that this evening. That's why we're meeting on the 14th and 15th. For that? Okay. Okay. Thank you for the clarification because I thought it was for something else. Yeah, <laughs> has to do with all that, all encompassing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Council, anything else? This may be nothing. We have no council meeting on the 21st. But it says four or five ordinances, public hearing and action on the 21st. Yeah. I'll need to go through some legal rigmarole to change that. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. I can change it on the next one. That has no impact on legality. But Good. I see Thank you. Right. <clears throat> Anything else, Mr. Bridge? Mm -hmm. Chief? Good, sir. All right. So moved. Second. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Oh, yes. Councilman Roadwell? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Motion to adjourn accepted 6 0. Thank you.